Yep. Come yes, out. Motion. Second. Motion by Busfood, second by DeSanto to come out of recess. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Next is Health and Human Services, Barry Tice. Good afternoon, Barry Tice, Director of Pennington County Health and Human Services. And I put together a PowerPoint because, as you know, I love PowerPoints and they try to keep me on track a little bit more so I don't ramble. So I will stick with the PowerPoint for today's I think we're presentation. I'm just going to make you freehanded and see how good you did. <laughs> <laughs> we'll you, stick if with your the memory is where it should be. <laughs> um, so, a few things I highlighted on this first slide are, of course, the rent, utilities, and burials. And we're really on the same pace as we were last year when it comes to rent and utilities. Um, the burials over the past I would say really five years, we continue to see an increase in those. Um, with anything we do in our office, we're always looking for different alternatives. When it comes to burials, there really is no alternatives. Um, we're pretty fortunate with the funeral homes in Rapid City and um, how we have worked out the cost associated with burials. There's not large increases every year and it's just it's one of those things. We have a lot of um, indigent community members who have no means of being able to uh, pay for burials. And so... A cremation, <clears throat> that's still the same rules? That they have to either agree to it or their relatives have to agree to it? And if nobody agrees to it, you got to bury them? Correct. And that can be kind of a difficult process, finding family members and getting people to agree, getting people to sign off on the paperwork. And so, um, but there's been, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but there's been a trend for family members to uh, look more at cremations because when they're living out of town and things like that, they still have a way to uh, memorial for their relatives. So the um, next slide. Barry, one question here. Yes. What's the difference between denied and declined? That's a good question. Uh, Commissioner Buskerud asked that same thing. Oh, so okay. when, if a client came in for rent assistance and we said, okay, you're approved, in some situations, a landlord will then decide, no, I'm not gonna rent to this individual for whatever reason, and so it's considered declined. Or if a client, we get through the paperwork and say you're approved and all of a sudden they say, I don't really want to lean for $240, then they've declined the assistance. Okay. Very good. I think that got their decline. I can add a little bit more on that because I think just because I had a renter tend to be their household, paperwork comes to like me and it's, it, it says I can't evict them if I take the $120 to look behind. Mm -hmm. That could be a part of it too, right? It, it could be, yes. So, uh, the, the landlord not signing the papers and... Gotcha. Okay. The next slide, I just highlighted the cost associated with the county burials uh, year to date and in 2016. So, again, we're kind of on, on the same path as we were. Um, so we'll continue to provide you with updates on costs associated with the burials. Healthcare changes, a lot of what our budget uh, revolves around is assistance for medical assistance, medications, and of course this year is one of those years where we're waiting on the federal government to determine how that might impact the Affordable Care Act. Um, you know, just this week there were some rumblings about how it might impact the Medicaid budget and all those pieces end up trickling down to counties. And so that's just something um, I have our economic um, director, they're constantly participating in webinars and we, you know, we, we try to stay up to pace on what's happening, but we'll, we'll keep our eyes um, focused on that and see what happens. Changes to the 2018 budget. Um, one piece that's different in this year's budget compared to the other year's budgets is at the new county health facility, uh, we've been working with Pennington County's IT department on 
It's a different computer system for the entire facility, but for Health and Human Services in particular, is it's called the Thin Client Network. Um, the county IT department has done a lot of research on this, and really what it boils down to is it's a more efficient, um, it's more efficient software. It's a, instead of running around with laptops within our office to the different rooms where we'll meet with clients, it's you log into a, it almost looks like a little box. Um, all the information is stored on a server, and this is my non technological expertise in this, but it's stored on a server. So even if it would come to theft of that, the information doesn't leave with the, the box that it's stored on. Um, case workers will be able to log, they could log into this computer system and it pulls up their desktop, so it saves time. Um, Lori had highlighted a couple of things for me on that where it's efficient, it's secure. Um, there's, when it comes to the electricity usage of it, it just starts to make more sense. Um, IT can save some time just with the amount of uh, maintenance they have to provide on these on these systems. Uh, a couple other things reduces the maintenance overhead for IT, enabling them to spend more time on strategic projects. Uh, efficiency for the users, as I mentioned. And it's, the formal word for it is follow me computing. And so we did look at um, putting that funding in the 2018 budget to support that piece of technology within that facility, which I think at the end of the day would be a good um, efficient, create efficiencies within our department. Other funding sources, uh, I just wanted to mention on here, just this week we were notified that the Community Action Program, and this isn't a grant, I come up and um, ask for permission to apply for because it's a little bit different <coughs> scenario. Is Community Action Program every year receives funding, and for the past few years, I would say <coughs> the past five years, they have reached out to Health and Human Services and said, we've received this funding, so if you have clients that would be eligible for it, and it's, it's some rents, it's some deposits, it's some past due utilities, and if the clients are case managed through programs such as Rebound, then we can access that funding. We don't do anything with the fiscal management of that funding, that's all done through community action program, but it's helpful, as we talked about, when it comes to rents and past due utilities, and they've helped out with some, uh, work close in the past and a few other random things. And so they've been awarded the 41,000, which we'll be able to access. Um, the John T. Vakurovich Foundation, we just received that check this week. Um, we received the approval last week or the week before for $60,000 for the discretionary grant, which is really helpful within our office when it comes to deposits. Um, you know, I would say in those graphs I provided for you prior to us applying for that grant, I think it's right around 75% of the dollars we used last year were for deposits because deposits are such a high need within our community and there's very few resources for deposits. And so it's handy for individuals who are receiving Section 8 vouchers and it's also handy just for what we consider the working poor in our community, individuals who are working one, two, sometimes three jobs to be able to afford deposits and first month's rent to get moved into a place. How often do we get those deposits back? Um, <clears throat> you Typically, so with the Vakurovich Foundation deposits, they like to see those returned to the client so then the client can use those um, oh. when they move into something else and so it's the same goes true with the community action program. But this year, one thing we're gonna do with this new discretionary grant, I shouldn't say with this new grant, but with, in the next, I would say, three or four months, we're gonna start calling individuals who we provided deposit assistance to through the last year's Vakurovich funding to see if they're still in the same apartment or rental home 
and if they're not, to see why they've moved so we can start gathering information because that has never really been done before in our community is to determine are people staying in homes? Why aren't they staying in homes? Why are they moving? And um, so this becomes an important piece, of course, for the foundation because we want to make sure that their money is doing what we hope it's doing. And so this will provide us real data on what's happening. Um, the MacArthur Foundation, as you've heard from the state's attorney and uh, Sheriff Tome and Eric Witcher, we also have a piece with the MacArthur Foundation when it comes to the Safe Solutions Program. And we currently provide some case management for the um, seven beds that are over at City County Alcohol and Drug right now. If the MacArthur Foundation um, approves our grant in September, then that would be helpful in providing a couple of case managers for our office um, to support that program. So like the others that have visited with you about that grant, we're, we're hopeful that um, that is approved because it would be a great, great piece to what we're trying to do within the criminal justice system in a number of, of, of different areas. Back that up. One item I didn't include on here is the Emergency Solutions Grant, and that's the grant we applied for through uh, South Dakota Housing, and it's a HUD grant to support, um, potentially support a position over at the new facility, but it also may help with operational costs at the new facility as well. We should hear about that grant towards the end of the summer. Um, it was just turned in at the end of May, and so they still have to go through their decision-making progress, but that's up to $80,000. Gary, who do you have do your grant right now? I'm sorry? Who do you have do your grant right now? Uh, myself and some other members of my staff, and by no means are we expert grant writers, but we have great data collection um, just through what Pennington County IT has developed, and so it makes it a lot easier. Okay. Reserves, one thing I just wanted to note since it was our budget hearing is this year with in 2017's budget, if we stay on the same trend going through the end of the year, there may be a possibility we would turn back money and um, back to the general fund. And I think one piece I wanted to, um, I don't know if suggest is the right word, but I guess that's the word we'll use, is when we look at the new facility, this funding might be useful in helping with offsetting costs for operational budget or some other piece to the new facility. So I just wanted to mention that in case that's an option. And of course, we always say each year when it comes to this, the medical budget where a lot of this money is turned back to the general fund, a lot of this depends on what will happen with the federal government with Medicaid decisions. Yeah. And Mr. Judge is here, are you in a hurry, Judge? We could interrupt Barry here if you're in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about wrapped up. <laughs> Mr. Buskert and Mr. Barry's budget. Well, sometimes the judge is more important things to do than <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, you're very important, Barry. <laughs> Don't let Mr. Buskert oh, fool you. Barry. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll speak fast. He just threw Barry off on his game here. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the last piece I wanted to, and I said last piece too, the, the last piece. We used to Karen, and that would go all afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> the last piece. I don't piece think anybody's I, got harassed up here except you, Mr. Barry. Perfect. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, that's normal. Um, so the last piece I wanted to emphasize with this is one of the, things I emphasize, we have very good caseworkers within our office. There's very good employees all the way around, um, but the caseworkers are excellent at identifying other funding sources, um, leveraging this funding, and so I say that because I think it's important that the community always recognizes the great work that they do, and so we have good employees at Pennington County, and 
anything we can do within this budget to help um, look at the opportunity for step increases and cost of living is something I, f I fully support. I think we have good employees keeping them on board. Um, and one of my memos, I mentioned that we have some of the best case workers in the state and, and I truly do believe that. They're good at what they do. They have very unique skills um, and it, it impacts the entire um, community because we have individuals who are becoming responsible, accountable community members uh, and it's, it's exciting. Barry, do you, do you have all your grants that you have got Pennington County the last year or so in here? Is that lined out? Um, probably not. Okay. But I can, I can definitely line those out for you. That would be good because it's impressive that he has went and got for a lot of the things that he does in health and human services. He's got many grants from mm -hmm. other different organizations in order to um, move some of his stuff forward, which has helped Pennington County a lot instead of us having to uh, fund those. And he uses his department people that are already with him instead of hiring other people to use those grants to move forward. So um, for Pennington County, that saves our taxpayers a lot of money when he's, um, people believe in Barry and uh, that he'll follow through and get it done right. So um, it's been pretty impressive if you've seen all the grants he's uh, applied for and got. Mm -hmm. uh, that tells you something about your department head, so. It's good, good teamwork on those. Is your computer and IT equipment, that 75,000, is that, that stuff you're talking about? Uh, in Correct. The, in the new building. For the new facility, yes. And, and that just requires, I'm sorry. We expect to recoup about 60,000 of that in savings over the next five years? That's been the estimate um, provided by IT, and I can read one of the potential benefits is, it's the, she calls it the PC replacement savings. So right now we're on, it's either a four or five year yeah. turnaround replacing computers and what she said here is over the course of five years, there's an overall cost savings of potentially $60,000 based on 40 users. Now, 40 users would be the entire facility, okay. um, but with our office, we're looking at 20 users, so there's still some ways of um, that becoming a cost savings to, to the entire department. It's just, as you can see, there's the the servers are the really the most expensive pieces to that, but the, um, you know, it's really embracing technology. And as we get closer to the, I'll call it the main hub of the computer system within the county, and now we'll be across the street instead of up the road on North Lacrosse. It's supposed to expedite some of the systems we use because we're constantly running multiple programs within our office. Um, again, gathering data from individuals, gathering data to support some of these grants, and so it's important. Thank you. I, <clears throat> the only comment I'd like to make, Barry, is, you know, when I met with you and your staff a while back, <clears throat> you know, I was pretty impressed that how you get return money, you know, and I guess the way to explain that is when somebody comes back and asks for rental assistance, the lien process, because we've had several people come up in front of us asking for to release the lane and so forth. But I was I was really impressed that you had people that actually liked that so that they'd come back in when they when things did pick up for them, they'd pay their bill and it <clears throat> gave them some of their dignity back or, or not give it back to them, but it, uh, they felt comfortable coming to do it. So I, was, I just wanted to bring that out. I, I think that's important. To sure, me. thanks. And your revenue, I see donations and contributions went from 15000 to zero. That's just because you hate to make a guess at, at how many donations will come in. So <clears throat> next week, uh, Julie and KJ, since that check just came in from Vakurovich, we had asked for 60000 and we didn't know what that was going to come in at. But I think they're going into 2018, they'll be able to include that. The Where it becomes a little bit weird in the accounting world is we'll look at how much we estimate we're going to spend in 2017 and then we would ask for a supplement in 2018 for the remainder so 
So that's my long answer to your question on that. Okay. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All yours. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Barry. Sure. Thanks. Get those changes. Thank you. So half a million is coming from the court system that we're making our budget. Just thinking, just bottom line, just give you 400 and you're done. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's let me sort of outline where we're at, Madam Chairperson, and again, I appreciate the time to allow us to work with you to give you a projection for what the Pennington County budget's going to be and what you're required to spend for court functions, just as a reminder that this, these are functions that you're either statutorily or constitutionally required to make. We make an effort on the end of the court system to try to make sure that we give you as best case as we possibly can for your budget for the upcoming year so you know where this is gonna go. Um, I'll jump directly to the increase on the court appointed attorneys numbers. The number, the budget number that we had for last year, we're, we're actually a little under that spending through June of this year, but we anticipate being on track. I can tell you categorically what we expect that the increase to be, and this is the reason why it's projected for you for the upcoming year is that state's attorney has brought two cases which are capital cases in Pennington County and those haven't happened for a couple of years. Uh, expectations for capital cases are that those are significantly more expensive than uh, any other case that the state's attorney's office brings. They're relatively time intensive for uh, the court system. They're time intensive for the attorneys involved. They require a significant amount of expert expenditures by the court system and realistically that's the number that is reflected in terms of our proposed uh, budget for you folks for the upcoming year. Um, Mr. Fifley, yes. any of these budgets have you ever since you've been doing well and, and that you know of have you ever turned any money back without it seems like since I've been here you've always asked you know, and I, I don't mean this in a bad way, we've oh. always needed more. So We've had a couple of circumstances, particularly in the abuse and neglect docket over the last couple of years where we've had to have a supplemental increase based upon increased case numbers. Right. Um, those, are, and I'll tell you, those are driven in large part by the fact that meth is a prolific problem in our community. I think the last crime statistic numbers show that the number of meth arrests are up 35%. And meth drives not only the court-appointed attorney's costs, but drives all those abuse and neglect cases, those child protection cases, because the vast majority of those cases arise out of that substance abuse increase. So that's the reason why you're seeing some of those increases. So the, bottom As I line, the bottom line is, is um, that's why the numbers are where they're at, is just because of based on what you've seen already this year and that you don't believe it's going to like get any better well, for 2018. I think the police department's RCPD report show meth um, arrests for the last year were up about 35 percent and that's really driving everything that we've got going on. Okay. I, I can tell you that I know one way that you can cut this budget is if you tell Mr. Bargo that he doesn't have any more prosecutors or can't bring in any more cases <laughs> because we're driven by sort of what he brings to us but okay. uh, realistically right now based upon those two factors, the increase in meth arrests and um, the fact that we have two death penalty cases in the court system right now, that's driving the budget increase that we're asking for. Uh, I'm hopeful um, that we can keep um, on track for this particular budget year. Over the last couple of years, we've tried to ask for a number that's more realistic for you so we don't haven't had to have that supplemental increase and that's why the budget numbers are a little higher than they were say three years ago but that's where we're at um, 
when I first took this job, we had some discussion about an effort to help in your predictability for court-appointed attorney's costs beyond your contract with Dakota Plains and beyond your own um, public defender's office. Chief Justice um, appointed a committee to evaluate the application process and the appointment guidelines. And a report by that committee has, I, I was asked to serve on it, co-chaired it with a judge out of Brookings. And we've issued that report, did that last fall uh, to his office and his staff. Haven't seen final results there, but I do want you to know and report that efforts are being made at the state level too to at least have some more predict more and better predictability for you. So um, for new people, and even myself, so um, tell how the system works so, so you come to us to ask for these fees and, and this um, breakdown. How about that? Um, is it because Bennington County, we bring um, cases and stuff to you guys, so the federal government required? Do you see what I'm saying? How, how does that process work with us, and how do we get sure. to where we're at in, in these um, breakdowns? Well, we've got three pieces of uh, information that we share with you in an effort to allow you to set your budget for the coming year. Uh, first is the court administration side, and that's jury costs, witness costs, expert fees costs, those kinds of things, the things that you're statutorily required to pay as part of the Pennington County operation through Mr. Bargo's office processing those cases. If, oh, we, if we impanel a jury, you pay jurors. If, if the attorneys in Mr. Bargo's office subpoena witnesses, we have to pay witness fees. Those are all those ad court administration costs. Do other, do other counties use our court facilities and they do the same thing? Or is it just Pennington County? Just Pennington County. The Pennington County f numbers are driven by Pennington County cases. If we have, for example, we have on occasion had hearings in, in a Pennington County courtroom for a case that we've had to move venue on from Fall River County. Okay. That case, if there's witness fees, attorney's fees, et cetera, those all get paid by the Fall River County Commission. Okay, that's what I was wondering <coughs> if they if um, just did those. The second piece of that is court-appointed attorney's fees, and those would be for criminal cases. The, uh, Bulk of those cases is handled by uh, those that are entitled to court-appointed counsel, which is a U.S. constitutional requirement, as well as a South Dakota statutory requirement that the county in which those cases is charged for those individuals that are unable to afford an attorney, re you're required to make that payment. Um, when I was here Tuesday, we talked a little bit about the voucher program and some changes to it, the idea being to streamline your collections process for those folks that court-appointed attorneys have been uh, appointed and those orders have been entered. The idea being that we can recompense you folks a little bit quicker. Right. As you might guess though, that's a tough effort because the folks that we're appointing attorneys for, the vast majority of those folks are zero income earners altogether. Absolutely. And because of that, it's hard to get the old sage, you know, hard to get blood out of a turnip. So anybody in Pennington County, if you're arrested in Pennington County, then if you're out of state or you're out of county and you go to court here, um, do we, because you're arrested here, they can ask for one of our attorneys? If, if you're charged in, if you're charged by the Pennington County State's Attorney's Office okay. or the Attorney General's Office in Pennington County, those are the two charging bodies that we work with. If you're in court in Pennington County, you're entitled to make an application for payment in the event that you're indigent for a Pennington County paid attorney. Okay. Correct. I didn't so know the bulk if, like, of those, if I was in Minnesota and I right. came here and got arrested yep. that I could still get a... You can. We, okay. it, it, that's infrequent, but it happens. Okay. Um, those fees are the second item. It's that CAAF um, fund. That increase from... We're on projection for this year in terms of what we um, projected for you last year based upon numbers that I've seen through June. The increase on that, that's the 400, uh, Commissioner Hadcock, that you referenced, is directly related to those two death penalty cases. Those are incredibly expensive. I think we had a conversation about that a year ago when we were first getting some whiff that those might be brought before us by Mr. Vargo's office. Now that he is officially declared, it's his election, 
to declare those cases in which his office is seeking the death penalty. That's what that reflection is, is the expectation over the course of the next budget year, those capital cases will be tried in Pennington County, and because of that, that's that increase in that number. And the third is, are those, you got a separate docket for your abuse and neglect cases, those are the child protection cases, and um, that number it has increased as well, largely, again, in part of the fact that we see the bulk of those that are directly tied to the parents who are having difficulty with substance abuse issues, and so because of that, our fees have increased there. Those cases are a little more out of whack in terms of court-appointed fees per case for you because there are multiple players in that case as opposed to one criminal defendant. We'll have, we, in any child protection case, we'll have uh, counsel not only for one or more parents, uh, sometimes up to three or four, depending on multiple fathers in a case for a family unit, for example. Uh, but South Dakota law requires us also to appoint an attorney for the child. And so in those cases in which individuals qualify for court-appointed <coughs> counsel, all those attorneys have to be appointed. So on a per case, per case basis, those are fairly expensive for you. Do we appoint an attorney for a child or all children? Like, is there an individual attorney for each child if there's five kids in the family? No. If it's one. Yes, for the children. it's one attorney for the children who are involved in the case, Commissioner okay. DeSanto, yes. Your bulk of your budget's increasing about a half a million, mm -hmm. or half a million, 25,000. And again, the dollars, this is a mandatory, basically from, again, a lot of the stuff that is statute Pennington County is required, sir. Correct. Either yes. South Dakota statute or federal law requires you to make these payments. <coughs> Any questions? For Judge Feifley? No, I just say that I, I'm I'm thankful for the judge because in the in the past there were some times when I think we under the courts underestimated these things and you know we're going to pay them. Yeah. So whether they're in the budget or he comes in later for a supplement, we're going to pay them. So we just as well find out right off the bat a good estimate of what they're going to be. Thank you, Commissioner Buskaroo. And that's been our goal, and that's part of the reason why the numbers are, um, over the last couple of years, look to be dramatically increased for, from like the early 2010, 2011 time frame is that we've tried to be more accurate for you up front in our projections based upon where we're seeing our caseload going and where things are going. I can tell you last year, for example, uh, we went over the 2,000 appointment piece, and that's the first time that we've ever done that. We've had, we had over 2,000 private ap attorney appointments in Pennington County. I think that's a reflection of some struggles folks in the county are having in terms of paying for attorneys Absent. and yep. a direct reflection of the number of cases that are going uh, rising. Our caseload number for 2016 was just under 21,000 active criminal cases filed in Pennington County. It also shows us what addiction and other areas uh, <coughs> do to Pennington County for costs. So any of those JDAI and all the stuff that we are trying to make into diversion programs, once this all happens is huge because it just shows you if you don't do anything, they keep increasing. And based on that 35% that you just said, um, I'm a what if as well, and I don't see it getting better. Um, it, it doesn't get better that quick. Is that a good way to put it? it it's, it's drastically overburdening the system, and yep. if it's any comfort at all, you're not unique. Um, the South Dakota State Bar is in town this week. We had some meetings over the course of the last couple of days. Um, I'm the outgoing president of the South Dakota Judges Association, so we invited the Attorney General to come talk to us about sort of what he's seeing in meth proliferation across the state. Um, his statistics show that this isn't unique to Pennington County. It, it, the fact of the matter is, is that the percentage increase is actually a little higher in uh, 
the eastern part of the state, Minnehaha, Sioux Falls area in particular. So right. everybody's going through the same thing and it's a struggle that we're trying to find. I will say I think some of the things that uh, we've been working together in our coordinating group, um, Commissioner Busgroot has been in attendance at some of our MacArthur Foundation the Safety and Justice Challenge grant programs. And those are designed, if we can get some grant funding, to reduce your local jail population, which will uh, result in some overall money savings for you in terms of that group, but also is designed to increase some diversion issues to reduce failures to appear for individuals, give them some additional encouragement in terms of being at the court date, some better reminders, all of which drive court hearings and thus costs higher. So we're making some efforts in a lot of different areas to try to reduce these costs overall for the system in large part because we're just getting overburdened. It's just about impossible to keep up on a day-to-day -day basis anymore. Well, the bottom line is, is meth isn't a nice mellow drug. And with the violence and the um, basically what that drug does to somebody is not something that is going to get better. It's a, and it's, now they're doing uh, the meth and they're calling it crocodile or something like that where they're mixing it and shooting it with meth and other chemicals. and. And now they're just diverting it into even something worse. And more uh, mental illness comes with that. A lot more violence comes with that. Um, and a lot more crime comes with that. And trying to um, do diversion programs for drugs like that is a lot more money and a lot more work um, to bring people off. And it's, it's a sad drug and, a, and what that does to, again, we can say about the numbers, but what that does to people that are around us, so it's kind Agreed. of a sad it's deal. A, it's a real scourge. Um, yep. As an interesting aside, and this is one of the things that we struggle with, one of the reasons that Pennington and Minnehaha counties have seen a, a greater increase in meth arrests than some of the more rural counties is that part of the cost of obtaining that drug is the cost of distribution, what it costs to get to various places and its availability, you know, the old supply demand economics curve that we learned in high school. Because there's more available in Rapid City and Sioux Falls, it's actually less expensive for folks to come here to buy their meth than it is to wait till it gets to Kadoka or wherever they're going to look at it. So we see increases in that just because the price per gram is, and that's how it's sold, yep. is about half of what it is in some of the more rural counties in South Dakota. So, you know, we want people to come to Rapid City to shop, not for that reason. <laughs> 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 no wow. So, Judge, with the Bar Association and meeting with other people, is there any other other communities doing anything different besides us? I know we've, we've got some great things going on here that are, are starting to take off and work on this, but have you seen any good results that you could, that you, you picked up somewhere else that you could bring back here to help? The only thing that I can tell you is that um, Pennington County in the Seventh Circuit, and, and this isn't um, trying to blow the court's horn because we're just part of a collaborative effort. I mean, your sheriff's office is on the front end where we partner well with state's attorney's office, frankly, the, the public defender's office is part of this process. We have community leaders, Rapid City Police, the chief there is an incredible supporter. We're really kind of on the front edge of trying to try alternatives that make some sense in terms of reducing this volume and thus reducing cost. Um, the one thing that I will say that seems to be effective in terms of seeing these folks back again as are those specialty court protocols, drug court, DUI court. Um, we've got a vet court protocol here. Um, anytime you have an opportunity to talk to the folks in peer who fund those, please sing their praises because those reduce, those have shown to be very successful in reducing the recidivism on the folks we see back again. I think the last statistics I saw was they're about 70 plus percent effective in terms of getting those folks out of the system. And there's n nothing else that we found that had done that either in terms of the regular probationary protocol or even incarcerating these guys in the pen for a period of time. All that does is, uh, frankly, delay their next drug purchase. 
I, I bring that up because, you know, it wasn't that long ago, <clears throat> I'd probably say about 15 years ago, we went through that phase, and, and I think throughout the country in the United States, that lock them up, <laughs> you know, and so you build more jail, jails, then you realize the, the cost of it, and it's good to see that, you know, we're, we're doing the alternative sentencing, and, you know, Mark Vargo talked about some of that, too, and that's why I wanted to ask and yeah, check. Which I appreciate that, Commissioner LaCroix, but we're, we're making efforts, and I mean, that's on the state level, that's on the local level with some of the things we're doing for that safety and justice challenge. We're making efforts to recognize the way to best handle this for public safety in the community as well as cost savings for all of us. I know this is a question that kind of could put you in a little bit of a bind, but I'm going to ask it just because I'm curious. How often do you have cases come in front of you that you shake your head and go, why is this even in my court? Daily. How do we reduce those? Um, that's a hard thing to directly answer, Commissioner DeSanto, because a variety of those are things other than what are driving court-appointed attorneys things. And that's just across the broad spectrum of things that we do between civil cases, protection orders, all kinds of things. We see some stuff that you recognize could be handled in other fashion, but they don't directly impact this particular budget, but they impact what my folks are doing in terms of time management and how do mm -hmm. we get to cases. I said it a little flippantly when I sort of said the way to reduce this budget is to tell Vargo to charge fewer cases, but he realistically doesn't have much chance to do that in light of the fact that this is, these are driven by substance abuse issues and that number just keeps going up. And unless there is a change sort of systemically how we handle substance abuse, more treatment programs, some other things, and saying the criminal justice system isn't the place to handle these, um, whether or not that's the right answer isn't for me to make the call. I just enforce the, the law based upon what's written before me. But I think folks will tell you that perhaps some investment on that treatment end may impact on this end. We're going to look at some things um, as we uh, hopefully secure that safety and justice challenge grant. Um, one of those is expansion of our diversion protocol. Right now, um, Mr. Vargo's protocol doesn't include these drug-related crimes. That's a big percentage of what we do for young adults. We're going to look at if we can expand that, see if we can't figure out some treatment protocols that manage that. The reason he's not doing it now is his diversion program is fairly time sensitive in terms of how long they're in it. Mm -hmm. And what we're seeing from these drug folks is that they need a longer period of time to be managed before we know that they have successfully combated the problem. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes. Five, Next is fire administration. Um, I just got an emergency notification. Wildfire Quincy and East Boulevard closed up to Star Village, Here's which is Jerome. literally our hill right yeah. here. Yeah. So I don't know if Jerome. He's oh, here. he's right there. Are you leaving? Well, that's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought maybe you had to go on this. Well, we can take care of this then. Okay. Where is it at? Is it a big fire or just Mine a little is, one? It's just up there. Quincy and what? They've had a, we've had a problem back there. Quincy so. and what? Quincy and East Boulevard. Close yeah. from Quincy Post up office. to Star Your House. Right up here. It's my rental house right there. Would <laughs> <laughs> right. like me to leave, Commissioner, and go check Bye. it out? <laughs> Did you say I could go? <laughs> I'm kidding. Mr. Call Trump. in an airdrop. <laughs> <laughs> then do the bill. That will do. <laughs> All right, now you's going up. How much we got that building insured for? <laughs> okay. Mr. Jerome Harvey. Related to the guy on TV, the Harvey, he's pretty funny. Do you? I kind of doubt it. <laughs> What's that now? I'm oh, sorry. You'd be surprised. <laughs> oh, dear Lord, Deb. He's tall enough just because he's not. I ain't going there. I love that guy. Always, that's why whenever I say his name, Jerome Harvey, it was always like, Steve Harvey. You ever seen um, Little Big Shots? Oh, yeah. That's an awesome show. 
Sorry. Okay. Go ahead, Jerome. Sorry. Well, what can I do for you today? <laughs> Tell us your budget, Jerome. Well, our budget covers a uh, county fire, and our county fire consists of 23 fire departments <clears throat> that cover, provide coverage of services for both fire, rescue, um, both wildland fire, structural fire, uh, disaster response, and everything else that has been uh, put onto the fire service for both the ta uh, both citizens and visitors to Pennington County, all 2,700 square miles of it. Uh, we have, uh, again, 23 fire departments. 22, or two of those are career fire departments, 100% career. Two of those fire departments are combination career and volunteer, with the bulk of our fire departments, 19 of them being 100% volunteer fire departments. We have approximately 500 volunteer firefighters that do provide this coverage all the way from the eastern end of the county uh, to the Wyoming line. Uh, we do provide, through this office, we provide an oversight of that as far as administration support, incident res response support, and a gamut of things in between there. And primarily tying those things together, making sure that those departments are coordinated, providing uh, any type of technical assistance that we can do for them, anything from training to helping them uh, get license plates for their fire engines. Uh, one of the most important things that this fund does, and I commend, again, the, the foresight that was put on this years ago was the fact that we do provide the workers' compensation coverage for our volunteers. And we pay one of the lowest rates statewide, according to the Municipal League. We actually pay less um, as a combined workers' comp than some departments pay individually. That's one of the most important things that we provide to, to them. But everything in between is provided out of this office, and we do do central coordination for all of that. We do all the record keeping for the fire service board, which was founded in 1973. Uh, we keep all those records together, so there's a continuous process of that as far as oversight on the budget and what that's doing. We do provide, uh, like in our communications section, anywhere from day-to-day uh, -day communications as far as events that are going on, training, et cetera. We also do provide the uh, backbone for both for the entire county, uh, for the sheriff's office, ambulance services, et cetera, all the paging goes across our system. Uh, for fire departments, ambulance, et cetera, we page some 40-some agencies out of our, off our page network alone. And then we do provide the analog uh, part of our communications. We do, do both digital and analog, and we keep our analog system up on that pr provides mobile coverage in probably 80 to 90 percent of the county. That's very important for us, and especially in the terrain that we have here. We do provide, um, through a rotational basis, what's called our five-year plan. That provides uh, basic personal protective equipment for our fire departments. They're able to apply for that on a rotational basis. And um, 19 of our fire departments, or 18 of our fire departments are eligible to put in for that funding. That's on a rotational basis. Uh, so that's one of the other things that we do that's very important for us. We also centralize the Class A foam supply. Our Class A foam uh, helps, does make our water more efficient. It acts as a securing agent, and especially as dependent as we are on volunteer firefighters, the sooner we can get the fire knocked down, get it secured, and get them back to the station and then back to the regular job, that's better for everybody involved. So we do centralize our foam supply, and that comes out of this budget also. We do provide training. We just certified 26 new certif uh, certified firefighters since the first of the year. I'm very proud of that. That uh, was paid for out of this budget, the majority out of this budget. We have another six to 10. We'll be finishing up in Wall this fall. About another 10 in Hermosa uh, this fall we'll be finishing up. So that's another thing that's provided out of this budget is those, those, some of those basic training items for both structural firefighting, wildland firefighting, and leadership training also comes out of this. Um, that just kind of gives you kind of an oversight on some of that, um, along with uh, some of the trailers. We also pay for our trailers out of here. We have a sprinkler trailer that does our demonstrations for that. We have a mobile uh, setup for doing self-contained breathing apparatus training as far as no visibility, uh, uh, atmospheres immediately dangerous to life and health. We provide that out of here. Uh, we also contribute to the... Um, Rapid City Pennington County Command Post, that portable tr uh, truck, we contribute to that, so we have a, a piece in that action also. Any questions for Jerome? I, I, I don't really have a question for Jerome. I have a question, I guess, for Holly. 
I, I need to have it clarified somewhere along the line. Now we got eighty-two thousand dollars worth of salaries, and I, you got a part-time person too, right? Yes, quarter uh, quarter percent is Carol. Yeah. And the one percent added for cola is a thousand dollars. That that to me is a little high, but I don't know. But the steps, I, what you were telling me, they're what? They're one point two five. Well, how did you get? Yeah. Four thousand dollars out of eighty-two thousand, right? Which is five percent. I don't. I, I I've been looking at all of these as they're coming through, and most of them are high. Don't know what they're doing. The yeah, cola, that's all I can say. The step amounts are much higher than they than the, the percentage that we're hearing. That I, we're, I I don't. And it was authorized up to two steps, so that would be two and a half. Oh, it was percent. authorized up to two steps. That was how the motion read at the beginning was authorized up to two. So it should be, COLA should be one, and it mathematically should make sense that it would be two and a half. Um, however, some departments have people that aren't eligible, so that would make How an effect there. How are you not there. eligible for a step? Anybody that's been employed less than a year. Yeah. Or I know like I another so. department, there was some reclasses that would make them ineligible. So there's there's a mixture of reasons. I guess I'm going to have to get a copy of what those rules are. Here. If you want a breakdown Most, with each department, we can put that together. That would be good, Holly. Well, I'm kind of doing it myself here, and I, I am all over the place. So just a question, Jerome, your salaries, is that because of Denny's salary compared to what your yeah. salary is? Okay. Yes, that's correct. And, and then, he got a going away present too. Yeah, his payout was in there. Okay, and then um, the equipment difference is about forty-eight thousand. Yeah, that was uh, they, they purchased the towel last year. Okay. Uh, Only coming up. And they with, had that in the budget. Yes, that's correct. I know. I know. So that's why I that's a. And yes. I, okay. Any other questions? Mr. Jerome? Well, that was my question, too. Yeah. I mean, I'm coming up with uh, 1,154, the 1% 1 plus 2.5% for steps. Is, I'm coming up with 3,336.57. I think your steps are off, Jerome. I would, I would, do, I would need be. some help on that. Okay. Uh, this, this, yeah. Somebody else that. that's. Yeah, that's way too high for just you and Carol. So maybe we make sure at the next meeting or sent to us the colas of everybody's and make sure this is one percent. This is yeah, we'll read there. Right. You can the other one. Well, or... we'll go back later. Yeah, I'm, I'll not, help I'm you sorry, out. not cola. One cola is the one percent steps. 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 Yep. Please, Miss Holly. I'll okay. go back later on the other one. There was one that way one. we're all clarified on each department and what those steps are. This is for uh, I, I got it here. Is there any other questions? For the fire administrator, the step was nine grand. But the cola was only like seven hundred bucks. His was wrong. Yeah, this step is forty. Huh? His was wrong. Way wrong. Barry's was way wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Barry's okay. was wrong. No more steps for our steps. Go we'll fight a fire. Is there any Sorry. steps for a fire administrator here? <laughs> what, what determines whether you keep us updated on the fire, Joe? Oh, well, Thank you very much. Oh, well, Thank you, I mean, sir. Now we're back to sort of a merit deal. No, it was an automatic. One in July, one in January. One we have one July. left, and it's Everybody already gets two. only two o'clock. Up to two, yes. <laughs> Depending on when your hire date is. Mr. Okay. Highway, so you're up. That's that stuff I don't understand. <laughs> uh, I'll never be able to figure out. Hold on, so if this is explain to me this this judge thing. Yeah. They get what they want. I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, Don't lose that paper. Any <laughs> so, okay, so we have a Stop bringing case. surprise yep. PowerPoints. Tom. Somebody gets arrested. Sorry. <laughs> no, you could. I just Eric, finished it. Eric Eric it. <laughs> Which yep. one is it? And there will be How, in a capital what case. What is he oh, no. paying for? He's paying for just his attorney's fees, right? Oh. What is the court paying for? That the sense. court pays for, in every capital case, there's another attorney, outside attorney appointed to help, to help Eric. There's go. two. I get very so much it's, there it's attorney go. fees right there too. No, okay. It's this not like court again. reporter. It's not judge. Nope. It's, it's another. It's another there's another attorney. attorney. 
So then on our... On and they our, charge black rate. Oh. Well, but then, like... Okay, not I'll give you minutes. a couple minutes. If, if Let's just stand up and stretch if you want to. You're the last victim. You get two hours. Mom and dad are in the car with the kids. <laughs> or How about a half an hour? I'll be happy. Does Eric take one? <laughs> The next one goes to Dakota Plains. You might have to, yeah. And then a third one, because be of appointed. the chain of conflicts, goes out to private, or does that come it out of this court? It depends on, I mean, if budget. Dad gets picked up for DUI, the other two probably don't need an attorney. But if there's a bag of dope in the car, and <laughs> one guy says, no, it's not mine, it's his, and he says, no, it's not mine, it's hers, now you all three got an attorney. That's in my mind. I can't get the sequence down of when it stays in the public defender, when it goes to Dakota Plains, and when it goes to these court. Always budgets. goes to the public defender until what he was doing for a while was I got too many cases. I'm not taking. He it. was, and he passes it off then to Dakota Plains, who is our alternate. Off the hook. And if they <laughs> have, a, have a conflict, holy cow! Then they say no, we can't handle it. Then it goes to a private. Can he? Conflict out Hold just because. Eric? Yeah, he can he review was, his he cases. Was. He was. Hey, you got in a good business. I'm not sure that it's it never was totally hand. <laughs> So all of those vouchers, though, that are to written hire to a new private guy. attorneys. He's a, he's a barber. That comes out of these court budgets the then. That's what this is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I've got yep. this. The the they are eucalyptus. That's why it's hot. hot because it's well, it just seems like I think you've be heard over and over. Well, we're increasing because of this. We're increasing like because of this. And if we have two death case penalties, <laughs> I don't understand why what, everybody's why increasing. Because and what, hap what happens is the there's another attorney um, appointed. And then they start with the evaluation. They'll have psychic evaluations. They'll have, before the sentencing, they'll have evaluations. They'll have witnesses from all over. And all that just keeps, witnesses, Jesus. A, a doctor might charge you $2,000 an hour to come and testify, or more. Okay, kids. Are you ready? It's Holly. Sorry. Well, no. <laughs> the, 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 we'll bring your own witnesses. I was getting educated We're myself, paying all of them. So. Yeah, I'm kind of enjoying this conversation. We're paying two witnesses. I, I just, might say something different. <clears throat> this court thing has always been confusing yes. in my it's mind, all the pieces good. that we're paying for. I mean, you're in highway about... court now. <laughs> <laughs> she likes it all. You're good, Holly. Good conversation. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, quite interesting. I'll start it up again when Tom leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Tom well, Wilsey, Highway works. Department. Yep. You're up, Mr. Wilsey. Um, I prepared a little PowerPoint, kind of show you how I look at my budget. This is basically to say, I'm, my budget I look at a little different than a lot of the people since I have different avenues that I have to go down. Okay. Um, budget breakdown, I look at my payroll. This year my budget, my payroll is estimated around 3.2 million. That is 24.9% of my yearly budget. Last year, this year actually, 2017, it was almost, it was a little over 30%. Maintenance is the, basically a third of my budget, 33.2%. Last year it was 31%. Construction is kind of strong this year for 18 because Sheridan Lake Road is included in my construction budget. So that is 41.9%. Last year it was 38%. Each of these unit payroll, my, uh, my base dropped a little this year. I had two employees, one with 34 years, one with 30 years that retired during 17. So my base is going to drop for 18 and uh, I have a couple of them that could go in 18. Neither of them have said anything to me yet, but uh, I've heard some talk. The increase in my budget is basically I'm requesting three additional FTEs. We're trying to catch up with our employees on some areas that we're short. My mechanics have been unable to keep up with repairs in the shop. This year, I pulled a truck driver into the shop to assist him on a part-time basis. That was four months ago. 
We can, we're short. We're running short a driver because of it. New Underwood shop. We only have two workers and a foreman. When we have one of our employees there that gets sick, wants to go on a vacation, or the one thing that I, I mentioned, jury duty, because we've had a lot of jury duty this year in our crew. That crew is cut in half. I mean, you lose one out of two, it's pretty easy. So I'm requesting one FTE to bolster that crew a little more. An additional entry-level engineer is the other one. I am, this would allow us to, the ability to prepare more, how, more plans in-house and save the county some money. Um, we're planning on doing more rehab projects in our bridges and we can get these plans done in-house. Also, we can complete more small grading projects in-house, thus saving us money. Not having to go to a consultant, we can save money over them. Maintenance. Our maintenance, when people think of maintenance, they think of snowing, patching roads, and blading gravel. Maintenance also includes crushing and stockpiling gravel, sanding materials, salt, cutting edges for plows and blades, pipe culverts, crack sealing, chip sealing, mag water, just to name a few of the items. Uh, equipment maintenance is also a large item. This is over a million dollars of our costs. Doing this work, doing our, the work that we do is hard on equipment. It requires constant maintenance, repairs, and sometimes replacements. Along with these items are building maintenance and utility payments. We've got four sites that we work out of. The Wall, New Underwood, Rapid City, and Hill City. And there are numerous other overhead items which are added in this category. Construction, 2018, we've got basically four large projects that I am, put, am putting forward to you. Biggest item on our plate is Sheridan Lake Road reconstruction. Rebuilding of the roadway from State Highway 385 to Alberta Drive. If you know where there's a gym along Sheridan Lake that Road, that's Alberta Drive right there. State's current estimation for this construction is 3.9, 9.8, sorry. <clears throat> Getting ahead of myself here. 9.8 million. This project has 5.3 million of federal and state monies dedicated towards it. What we're using is some federal STP funds or STIP funds, and the state is paying the matching 18.05%. Uh, we'll have to cover anything over that amount. Previous highway Heine, the previous highway superintendent, worked to get six and a half million into the highways reserves to cover this cost. If you add those two together, that gives you 11.8 million that we could comfortably use for this project. If did, the 9.8 is low, did we, he get the we've six got some point, contingency. Did he get the 6.5 out of STIPS? Because remember, you get STIPS every year. No. Where did the 6.5 come from? The 6.5 is by budgeting the court. They, they actually budgeted to add to reserve a couple of years. And then any shortcoming, uh, over, any money we had left will go into the reserve. The STIPS, since this project got started, have been added strictly to this project. Okay. Thank you. Another, another project we have on the agenda is 161st Avenue north of New Underwood. This is a project we're going to do in conjunction with Meade County. It's at the county line, and the, the road makes some curves right there, which have had several accidents along this section. There were 15 accidents in five years' time. Uh, we have no fatalities as of yet, and we'll only pay for the section in the Pennington County. Our por portion is estimated at half a million dollars. High cost for our section is due to a very large fill, about 35, 40 foot tall. The road will be straightened out and will be built on the section line. This project was originally scheduled for 2019, but Meade County got their four million that they need for their portion and want, wish to move it up to 2018. So I, budget, I adjusted accordingly and budgeted for it. And that's in your budget already? That's what 
I, part of what I submitted to you folks. Oh, it's in there? Yes. Not a added to the budget, it was already in the budget. This is in our budget for 18, yes. I adjusted a couple projects so that I could cover that. Bridge projects are not very numerous for 2018. Uh, currently, we're get right now, I just talked to my bridge inspectors, they're out doing them right now, inspecting our bridges. So we should have results from this, this year in about two months, a month or two. Projects in our schedule are South Rockford Road Bridge and rehabilitation of three structures in Dark Canyon. We've been discussing the South Rockford Road Bridge. You guys are quite familiar with that, I feel. Dark Canyon bridges are replacement. These are all pre-stressed double T structures. There's four structures in Dark Canyon. Three of them need rehab. Uh, this is replacement of deteriorated pre-stressed deck units. One of the structures possibly could require replacement of all the units. So it would be, in that case, it'd be a, a, a total deck replacement. We, the 353,500 estimate may be low because of that. We will have to adjust accordingly. If, if that's the case, we'll probably have to budget for maybe two of these the next year. Since we moved the Sharon Lake Road rehabs up to 2017, they were originally in the 18 budget that I turned in. That, that has happened since then. That was 400,000. We may be able to cover all, all three of those structures. I'm not sure. We'll have to look at it a little closer. If we're not handing any surprises from our bridge inspectors this year, we're hoping for a slow year on bridge work. And these bridges are in your priority list. They yes. were the first double priority. <clears throat> They've been in our in our five year plan for about five years now. Okay. Well, how often are the bridges inspected? Pardon? How often are the bridges inspected? We get half of our bridges inspected every other year. I mean, we have two sets of bridges. This one will be inspected in the odd number of years, and this bunch will be inspected in the even number of years. That way we're spreading the cost of the inspection over two years, but all the bridges have to be inspected every two years. Got a little bit of information on each of those projects I was mentioned. Sharon Lake Road. This is uh, from 385 to Alberta Lane. The first section from 385 to Biker Bob's Corner. This section has a lot of realignment in it. Several curves will be smoothed out and shoulders added to the road. The roadway section will match the next section of the road, the, se the center section of the road. This area is mostly for forest service land and we have, they have completed the NEPA, the, the environmental portion of this, so it's ready to move forward. In the center sec section, they have six foot shoulders. This is a section that was rebuilt after the 1972 flood. This region, we're not going to be doing any regrading. It's only going to be eight overlaid, and that we won't have any dirt work. This is also the region, it's only about two and a half miles long, and it has all the eight bridges that I brought forward to you at the board meeting the other day. These structures, what we'll do is we'll just grind the, the, the asphalt in and match it to give a good ride onto the bridges. The next region is actually the largest region, it's a little over five miles long. This section has curves that will be smoothed out, flattened, and it's most, this area is mostly private land. There is some forest service in here. Um, Curve will be improved. This curve here, if you look at it, it has a crown built into the road going around it. So it has a super elevation that's the wrong direction. It'll make, it'll improve, we'll, this curve we're actually going to flatten out a little, lengthen it, and uh, correct the super elevation. Drainage will be improved and access for this whole region because it's a large residential area, local traffic will be able to get into their houses <coughs> during construction. 
Can we put about a three-foot bank on Biker Bob Corner? That <laughs> <laughs> if we were to follow what we would need, that bout would be right, probably a 20% grade. That'd be great. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, I have one. The region nearest to town is going to be a curb and gutter section. The due, this is due to restrictions of right-of-way and trying to reduce grading in this area. Uh, curb and gutter was cheaper than all the other stuff we would have to do to get this work done. This is the section beyond the project. This is what we're hoping the whole world, a whole road will look like when we're done. It'll be similar to the, what's between the city of Rapid and up to Alberta Drive. 161st Avenue, north of New Underwood. That's the one I mentioned that's estimated at about half a million dollars. Joint effort with Meade County, numerous accidents in those curves. If you look at this picture, it looks like a nice straight road. The first curve is right at the top of that little rise, right at the top of the picture. It's kind of a blind corner. You don't see it until you're into it. This is the second curve of that roadway. This was taken yesterday. I went out and took pictures on this road. Nobody's ever gone off that road. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's quite evident there was something happened here. It's everywhere on that road. Like I said, we have, if you look to the top of the picture, you see how it's coming in there. What we're doing is lining up our road with that road. We're going to straighten the roads completely out. And, uh, and both sides have quite the drop. Yeah, it drops pretty road. good there. Yeah, took to the there. left there, there's a big valley. Yeah. <clears throat> That's it. That's where I'm standing on center line looking at the, where the road's going to be. You can see there's going to be a large fill in there. That's what you meant by the large fill. Yes. That. See that power pole that's halfway down the hill? That's about where the county line is. So from there, away from you, is where Pennington County is building. That fill will be about even with that top of that power pole. Oh. There's a big fill in there. There'll be a small cut at the crest too to balance it. Oh, go back here. Because it's a drainage area, does it, when you fill it, is, do you put all kinds of different things for drainage that come off of that so that doesn't erode, you yeah, know what I'm saying? They're, they're controlling the drainage with this. They're going to be shaping it all and getting it to work. And yeah, we It'll actually we make have the drainage to. better instead of such a high pitch where the water is yeah, We have to control okay. the, the erosion. That's all done with uh, best management practices for erosion control. Yep. If you look on the upper left, you can see an SUV up there. That's where the road currently is. That's between the first and the second curve that I was showing you. Yeah, power pole here, now you're looking at it from a different angle. That power pole on the left is where the county line is. And I was mentioned about the grade being about equal at the top of that pole. The rehabilitation of the three structures in Dark Canyon. This is just showing you kind of what the terrain is right in there. Um, these three structures were built after the 72 flood. Decking units on these structures are deteriorating and several need replaced. The biggest culprit here is they put asphalt on top of the deck. The asphalt tends to hold chemicals and water and everything in there and deteriorates the concrete. This is a view of the side of one of the deck units in 2014. I also had a picture from 16. I couldn't get it to download correctly. You could see where the deterioration has in increased. I had a picture of this exact same spot. That whole side of that leg that comes down was gone. So it's fast deteriorating. Um, this is a picture of an interior unit under the bridge. That leaching on the side of that, on those legs, is the lime leaching out of the concrete. It's de the concrete is deteriorating such that it's weakening itself. So the, the lime is what makes basically the concrete crumble more, which could make it so it 
it's, it's part of the cement itself being leached out of the, chemically leached out of the cement. Which, and it, so it right. weakens the concrete. Right, because what it does is then it dries it out more and will crumble and... Yeah, it's, it just the way it's coming out. If you look on this, you can see there's lines of it. On the, I'm saying on that if leg. I looked at that, that looks like pretty stable. But why it wouldn't look stable is because of the white spots in it. Yeah. And the white, and what that does is it's chemical leaching, which would weaken the, yes. the pillars and right. And if you look, you can see lines, horizontal lines on this leg. Though that's probably because of the rebar in it, the reinforcing steel and the pre-stressing strands. With that, show, that makes me think that we've got some serious rusting going starting in this deck unit. So this deck unit, its life is limited. South Rochford Bridge. We talked about this a lot at the commission meeting. And we're, as I, you and I both know, we're hoping the DOT doesn't delay this structure anymore. How do we keep it moving forward and that kind of I, thing? Do we, they understand that it's a priority for us? Oh, they know it's a priority. Okay. <laughs> and I'm reminding them almost weekly. And, and at this point, um, they don't have a start date for us? They've got a guy on, they've got a consultant on board to get the plans together now. Okay. That's it. I am pushing for 2018 or 19 for construction. I am pushing for 18, but DOT doesn't push real well. Maybe we could write a letter or something for push. <laughs> 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 that we would like it, you know, as a priority for us. That's it for my presentation, but you can see I look at my, my budget in three parts. And that's my people, the payroll, maintenance, and then construction. And it basically, usually on a regular year, it's about a third, third, third for each of those. So Tom, I, I have a question. Yes. So you have a $13 million balance in your road and bridge fund reserve balances. Yes, 13200000 OK. So how much is federal state money in that, in that reserve? I mean, are those for roads that have state monies and stuff all built into that $13 million? So how, is it separated out federal state monies and general fund or others? Because that would be nice to know um, on this budget. These um, items, most what, of that. What we can't, what I'm saying is what we can't, um, touch is because it's allocated from the fed state no and what none of we that is. if we wanted to do something different what's the other general fund or other monies that is if we decided to reprioritize this the general uh, my reserve fund is like a savings account we haven't we don't have a designation of federal and state and all everything it's what was budgeted or left over after a year, okay. in a year. This is for us to determine where it's needed, okay. where we're going to use it. It, does, it doesn't have a project tied to it okay. or, a, or an entity tied to it. I guess it, it does have a project or entity tied to it, as you see from the list. No. But I guess I wanted to know. Um, that is our, pro our priority, wh where we're going to tie it. Okay. So this is all... This, this money is all fund from general fund or other. It's not state or federal money in this 13203 It's no state or federal because that money's been spent. This is what we had left over after other projects or budgeted for it. So Sheridan Lake, you feel there's going to be overages, right? Pardon? That's why you have $4 million in Sheridan Lake Road construction. Yes. That's what I figure we'll spend in eighteen. That's what I allocated towards it. Okay. That's according to their 9.8 budget, 9.8 million that they estimated. That's where I said, original, in my start of this, I said, Heine saved up six and a half million. Well, he had less than that five and a half that I've got in the STP and state funds. 
he only had three and a half at that time. So he he was shooting for six and a half to cover what was needed. And you have three million three hundred forty one thousand nine hundred eighteen for your change from seventeen to eighteen. That's that's a huge increase. That is basically Sheridan Lake Road. In reality, you look at that, I, I said I was going to pull $4 million out of So out you're taking the reserves, you're taking the $4 million out of the reserves and putting it up there, or you're, I guess I'm... Yes, that's yes, what he's doing. That is what, that's included in my dollars available. He's basically just taking it out of his savings account and putting it up into spending authority to complete that project. So does that add to the the 90 what was our total 96 million or whatever because of that do you see what i mean on our total amount total that budget, we needed yeah but it's already money we had in that budget nine million six hundred yeah i'm basically just taking it out of a savings account for what we've been saving it for to build the road That's in your budget. Yes, right. that, I so put no, that. That's not added to the ninety-six. Budget. That's all in it's this. It's already in there. It's already. In it, there. Yeah, it's part of it in your in your budget summary on the road and bridge fund. Right, and I, that's I saw that. That thirteen millions in there. So we're going if, from eighty-eight point eight to ninety-six. Where are we getting the increases from, Holly? Then of. Two, eight, nine, nine point well, six million. Not, not, not. No, nine, I'm sorry. The total. This one. Oh, okay. You're fretting. That, that's Sorry, a separate fretting. discussion. <laughs> I guess I was just. That's a separate discussion outside of Tom's. Okay. We'll have that. Well, that's where I thought were the. And the. I do have a question, though. South Rochford Road reconstruction, $3.8 million. Is the $1.8 or whatever we owe on top of the feds to make the earmark, is that in here or is that already out of there? I figured we'd probably be pulling it out of there. Out of that 3.8. So then if you, uh, what is it, 1.8 to get the year? 1.8, yeah. So 1.87. You really seven. have 2 million left in the right. 2 million that, see, this is what I had allocated two years ago towards this. I understand. And I've just been carrying it over. I didn't know if that 1.8 was in there or not in. So if we had to turn back the 1.8 because we couldn't do the well, road, we, it would we, be out of there. We use that. To do the road, I take That's it. what I was figuring on, yes. Then we're going to use the two million to pave the Rochford Road from Rochford to 385. <laughs> That's what we're doing. So not to 385, because I'm not, <laughs> not going to pay part of Lawrence County. <laughs> I, 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 you ever figured out what that would be? Okay, so. Oh, never mind. We'll talk about that later. So on <laughs> Rochford Road, basically the 1.8 was in that total of 8 million. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Yes. That's what I thought. <coughs> yes. But he didn't take it out of it like this. He just put it in a total of the reserves of $4 million in case we had to pay back the 1.8. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got a match. Right. The match funds and everything are part of that. Yes. Okay. So there's $2 million in the Rochford Road that you have saved and Heine had saved just in case there was overages. Of South Rochford? Yes. Actually, we've been building that reserve since Heine's left too. It was only nine million when I took over. It's now 13. So we've been trying to save up some money in case there's overages. And because of the total in um, 12, 13 years of um, construction changes over yep. many years, just yep. in case, which is good. Any okay. other questions for Tom? How about the three FTEs, Tom, everybody else? I got an hour, so you guys can shoot away. <laughs> well, everybody else held the line on no more FTEs. Um, you know that, right? I know you are, but I'm still going to request it. Okay. Because I feel that we need them. Especially, well, I'll be honest, especially the first two. We have our staff right now, we are at our full 50. I have two guys that are on on uh, light duty because of injuries, and we have crews that we can't even send out. We we want to send a crew out to do some dirt work. We don't. 
we have to shut another crew down to go out and do it. And you know, Tom, a lot of the departments have that same issue in some yes. of their areas. So um, I understand. I'm still requesting. You're pretty brave. <laughs> I know. I understand that. But when budgets are tight Tom. and we hold the line, we we got to make sure that you know we're across the board, though, Tom. But what's the approximate salary per year for each FTE? Pardon? The salary per year for and each benefit. FTE. I have the. The lump sum for all three of them, I can get to you the dollars each. Okay, so my question, next question would be, we spent 131000 in overtime. How many FTEs will $131,000 buy us? Two. And will we eliminate overtime with those FTEs? Eliminating overtime is not reasonable. Okay. Uh, I'm reduce it substantially. I can reduce it. I can reduce it some, but eliminating no. We don't have snowstorms Monday through Friday. That is a big chunk of my overtime. Is snow removal and stuff on weekends and uh, and extra hours during that. So your FTEs are in this budget because you got three million two hundred eleven and seventeen, and then if they do the cola, and that's with I, with the new ones in it. That is not the portion. Where does it say it, Tom, me, the new ones? Let me put this here. The, port, the one sheet here, the 3,256. Yes, sir. That does not include them. Okay, so where do I get the inclusion? That You take the 200 and, here, let me find them. I put the dollars in an undesignated fund. Where's that at? Trying to find it. So they are in your budget. They're in, yes, they're in not this in the budget. Salary line, but in the budget. They're not in that salary line. I figured if I get them, I'll transfer it. Okay. okay where's your undesignated? I think it's undesignated. Anybody see it? Undesignated roadway projects. Two hundred one three hundred. A bearing. Two hundred one what? Zero three one one zero four two six. You just On threw my in sheets, the rest of your stuff? I give you this. Do you have these sheets here? Yep. It's on the last page. It's on page four of these sheets here that continue on every year. Can you show me your page, Tom? Pardon? Can you bring me up your page so I can see where you're looking? Page. Okay, where's it at? It's right here. I put it in undesignated roadway projects. That's where you put employees? That's where I put people. <laughs> Undesignated roadway projects if, are if humans. If I don't get them, I'm going to go to a roadway. You find it? This is our page four. That's a different sheet than that. Okay, I can't find your sheet. I'm not either. We don't find your sheet, Tom. Okay. I apologize. Oh, I think I found it. It's number five, undesignated roadway project. No, that says zero. Proposed that is where I put it in proposed my Proposed 204-207? 204-207 for the three of them, for all three of them. That includes all overtime, Social Security, and we estimated their insurance at a family rate. And the COLA and the merit. It's all in there. It's all included. Okay. What would you estimate that it would reduce your overtime by? Adding, let's say one. Pardon? If you added one additional FTE, what would you estimate it would reduce your overtime by? Or if I were to add, let's say we put the mechanic in. It would not probably reduce overtime, but it would just make the, okay. He's flipping the mechanic to a, his driver to a mechanic. Yeah, I'd switch that driver to a per, make him a permanent mechanic and hire an entry level driver to replace him. Is what I would do. So, my my uh, payroll would go up slightly because of the new person. But 
cut in overtime, it just basically would be maintaining the crew I have now hmm. with one extra mechanic. It would be maintaining the drivers that I have now, let's put it that way. It's it's doubled in your budget, Tom. Just so you know, Julie's but Julie's doubled it she in the budget it. summary. <laughs> so doubled. It's it's in there twice. So it's yeah. four hundred and two hundred and four right off the top, whether you approve them or not, because it's doubled. In so the budget if we summary. didn't, it would be four hundred and fourteen. If you didn't approve any of them, that total ninety six million would go down the four hundred and four thousand. But they got, she, she they got double it. entered, huh? She has it twice. Oh. Might okay. be because you put it under those undesignated roadway projects. I was just trying to find a place to hold the money. That doesn't sound good, Tom. Are you, you know, one time you were on line to uh, not get any property taxes. Are we there yet? Or are you there? We got some. Well, we got. 47,000, 1.8 million. Yep, 1.8. For your revenues, you know what I'm saying? In my revenues, current property tax, 1.8 yep. is estimated. Uh, did you get any? Where's that at? That's more. Second page. My right. sheet looks like this, where I estimated my quantity. Uh, page my, at the top. In, That's good. There you go. I thought, I thought after you got a raise in Motor V and the registration fees, motor fuel tax, we weren't going to be dipping into property tax for the highway department. I think that, that was wrong. Did I miss something some one of these years? I'm not the only one that remembers that. Um, I can't say as I remember it. I know we cut the uh, general fund a year and two years ago when we thought we were going to have the wheel tax. All right. And we didn't get the wheel tax, so we're back. And, it, at, and yeah. it never, I've never got anything back from that. Okay. And I think I was the one that said, you know, if the wheel tax doesn't pass, I'm not going to put the money back in property tax. We're going to do without roads. And now we're back to putting it in property tax. I think the people who use the roads should have paid for them, not the people who own the property. Yep. What, what is Bankhead Jones? Oh, that's a, some st money we get from. I'm not 100% positive myself. I think from forest, some sort of forest cutting in a jar. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Okay. All right. I had to have that one explained to me, and I'm still confused on it. We wound up with less money for one. Yeah, and that's going downhill. <clears throat> Less money from local government highway. Any other questions for Tom? No, I don't think so. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Board, you were having a discussion, Polly and Ron. What were you guys discussing about attorney stuff? That maybe it sounded interesting, but I wasn't focusing on how the attorney stuff works. You said, Ron, that there's, when they go to uh, capital uh, I just case. didn't understand all of the pieces and how they played right. when you have these capital cases, because it just seems like we've heard over and over and over, state's attorney is increasing, public defender is increasing, courts is increasing, yep. and I couldn't figure out in my mind who paid for what piece, and I must have missed that a capital case requires two attorneys. So we're paying for one from Eric. We're paying from one out of the court budget. Mm -hmm. But then I was trying to figure out how Dakota Plains Legal Services, the contract we have with them, plays into it. And that comes into play when there's conflict cases, when there's multiple family members involved in the same case. Like our public defender will take one, Dakota Plains will take one. And if there's a third conflict, it goes out private, which also yeah, comes out of that court's budget. So yeah. I didn't understand who was paying for what piece. Right. And, you got it. and my question. We pay for everything. We pay for it all judge, eventually. My question to the judge regarding are we prosecuting things that he wonders why in the heck we're prosecuting him. What 
what I was leading to is, I'd like to kind of go through the case files, I suppose, because are we spending money prosecuting the 17 year old that walked into the quick stop and, and stole a candy bar, a candy bar or a carton of cigarettes or, or something like that. And whereas, you know, I'm going to date myself, but back when I was growing up, the sheriff called my mom and dad and said, Hey, your son was down here and did this. And, uh, you want to have a talk with the store manager and, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, sorry. I mean, you know, are, you are, we, are, we, are those winding up in our courts now where we're I, spending yes, I don't yes, think because 30, don't do anything. That's why. But that's what the young adult diversion program is. Yeah. That's what that whole thing well, is geared towards is keeping them out of our court that, system. That's from the ages of 18 to 25. That young, young yeah, but I'm, talk, yeah, I'm talking somebody that's You're just talking, over that age where they're well, not going age, into that juvenile diversion if they're 18. 17 and a half, 18, 19 years old. The young adult, that's the brand new one that they're Still just living starting, at home. right? They do that till they're 30. <laughs> <laughs> Not <in> my house. <laughs> do we have anything else we want to talk about today, about the budget? Unless there's anything from the board. No, we just need to make sure these numbers are right on these no, cost of living. I mean, what they're, they're asking for, they're, we'll every one the, of them is off. Or, we'll yep. do the steps in the COLA because there's some that are not right. Right. Um, okay. So we'll re-verify those. I know Tom's <laughs> is doubled in there. No, um, the steps is added to the COLA. The COLA is applied first. That's a January 1. Okay. And then one applied in January and one applied in July. That's why they call it steps. Correct. Okay. Correct. It's about recess. And we've already, for 2017, we've already Somebody paid said, that. Hey, there were no steps in 2017. Okay. We just got the cost of living increase. Not kidding. Okay. Yeah. Took you more. All right. Yeah. We have a motion to recess yeah. until yes. tomorrow. Second. Motion by Busker, second by DeSanto. Sure, why not? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries.